Hello peeps, in this video I'm going to show you how to back up your uh, sampler instruments, your kind of handmade sampler instruments in Ableton Live, and there's numerous different ways of doing it. So let's get to it. This was a, a question raised by a student uh, numerous times it's been asked, so I, th I thought I'd make a video to try and cover it. So I'm inside Live, I've only got one track, no sends, no returns, literally one track, and inside that track there's a sampler with uh, however many samples that is, and then some plugins or devices as they call them after the sampler. There's a tuner when I was fixing any of the sample anomalies and some echo at the end. What I've also done is mapped using this function over here. Some of these macro knobs that you can see there, um, hidden here, macro knobs to different elements inside so if I turn the attack time, decay time or whatever you can see that this will control and there's a little green knob there obviously a little green dot sorry on each of these so I can control all of the attack times of my samplers. I've also got a wet and dry knob of that over there and then some uh, features that I've um, mapped as well inside the time delay so I can hide certain things, I can get rid of certain things and maybe I just want that to be viewable to the player so make sure it's record armed, make sure your uh, macros, if you use them, are mapped. And then we can... Obviously play and mangle and do whatever we want and find something that we're happy with. Cool. So with regards to saving, the first thing you should always do in live is collect all and save. And that will obviously ask you where to plonk it. Um, so let's do that. Collect on the save. What do you want to bring with you? Um, I want to basically always copy everything. I don't care if I have duplicates. Uh, it means that what I save in my session will be uh, completely black backed up and I'm not um, damaging files from another session that I rely on elsewhere. So, okay, you should get a finder window where it's going to ask you where to go. Done. Um, I've already done this, so it, it just saved on top. That's one way of doing it. The other one we could go with File and Manage. Over in File and Manage, we can go manage this project. And it'll show you, you've got how many things that are used in how many files, that are, how many media files, and so on and so on and so on. And what we want to do here is create a pack. This is really, in a sense, no different from zipping up your session, but it kind of does it for you. So um, we can collect on and save, which we've just done, and now create a pack. It's going to ask us, okay, cool, where do you want to make your pack? Let's stick it on the desktop. And notice the extension here is .alp, Ableton Live Pack. And KidZylo is fine. So KidZylo on the desktop, jolly good, save. Crunch, 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 crunch. The pack was created. What it actually did was this, um, and it made this ALP file. This is Ableton Live's zip format, if you will. And so you could just embed that in your website, email that to somebody, link that to somebody in some way, they will download that. And when they double click it, what they will get, uh, let me get rid of this, what they will have is the following dialogue. Where do you want to install it? Basically saying, where do you want to unpack it to? Um, so I'll go back to desktop. I say, I want to unpack it here. Go open, jink, 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 jink. Okay, there we go. What actually happened was that was unpacked and generated this. If we look in there, we can see our Ableton Live session, homemade samplers was our device group, and the samples that we'd used, processed or cropped, those are the ones inside my sampler. So that's the other way of doing it. There is, of course, a last and final way, which is also interesting. If you're on your user library or your current project, or you can add folders by saying add your music directory or whatever. I've added my desktop. One last thing you can do is you can just physically pick this up and plop it into that folder and it'll just add it there. Notice there was an extra little chugga 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 on the window. And what that was, it made the Ableton device group file, which is your macros and everything, and then it had to copy the samplers, <laughs> which are uh, here. So here we've got a little project that spat out with samples and the Ableton device group. Let's go and look at that. So remember, we made that one from unpacking the Ableton Life Pack. We dragged onto our desktop, so obviously we had a name class, so it added 01. And what it's basically done is this. It's give us an Ableton device group, project info, and samples, 
processed, cropped, and the samples that are used inside my sampler. Notice though, in this version, although we're in a project, we don't have an Ableton Live session folder. Not that that's a big deal, it means that they won't get any MIDI files, they'll just get the device. So if I was to make a new live set, don't save, blank live set, nothing going on here, I could come and get just the Ableton device group, drag it in, that knows it's a sampler, this is launched with all the things hidden, but if we dig in and we find the sampler itself, we'll see the, the samples are there because they were exported during the drag and drop. So there's numerous different ways. Um, it's really up to you to choose the one that you think is the best for delivering to clients. Uh, I hope you find this useful, and I'll catch you in the next one.